welcome back to the shed. It's your man Andy, your man in the shed. Hope you're all well. Back to the Bible, Genesis chapter 3. So we've all seen what wacky stuff has happened in the first part. The world has been created and Adam and Eve are now in Eden. Because of course they are. So, chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? Right, well to start with, right? Um, a science book with talking snakes also would he know to ask questions that God may have asked. To start with, where's this snake serpent thing come from? Because in chapter one and two, he wasn't mentioned. And now all of a sudden, there is a serpent turns up. Um, I guess it's creative thing, but you can do that in fiction. But to be fair, yeah, this serpent, where the hell did he come from, hasn't been mentioned until this very line. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. Wonder why the uh, serpent never asked Adam about some mysterious tree and why. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, nor sh or you shall die. So, when you look around at the world today, there are 73,000 tr trees, species, so it should be easy to miss. Also, why would you put the, the death tree right in the middle of the garden? But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. If this all-powerful God who got everything that there ever was in six days said to me, you don't eat that, then you don't eat it. Why would you believe some snake? For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This must be a so cherry-picked line. It makes out singular our context it makes out the good god is great but is he um so when the woman saw that the tree was good for for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise she took of its fruits and ate and she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate so they ate the fruits, but was Adam there when Eve picked the fruit? It doesn't really say. This can be so used against Eve. Right, so let's read that line again. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of, of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. But it doesn't really say whether... He was with her when she picked the fruit, but she was with her when she ate. So I don't know. So line seven then. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together to make loincloths for themselves. Now I would say that clothes, not only does it hide your modesty, but it also helps keep you warm or cool. And even in heaven, it must get hot or cold. And I don't imagine it's hot, to be fair, because these people lived in the Middle East, deserty type areas. It's going to get hot and it's going to get cold as well. Um, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. What? Wait, what? God, the all-powerful, the all-seeing, goes a walk, so they hide. If God sees all, how can they possibly hide from him? That doesn't make sense. And why was he walking in the Garden of Eden? Who knows? But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? You all-powerful man, you should know where he is. Why call them? Use your crazy-ass godlike all-seeing powers. Of the garden you should be able to find them he said i heard the sound of you in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself 
all the times God has seen you now, you're bothered that you're naked, really? He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I command you not to? How does he know that? Like, literally, he, he's like, well, I'm going to close off. So, of course, I'm naked. But he doesn't know he's naked because him and Eve are the only people they've ever seen. But surely, like I say, if you have something on, it's going to keep you warmer, isn't it? It's not just about hiding your modesty. Um, but he's pretty smart, this God, it seems. The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. And out of defense, here, he possibly didn't know that this fruit was from the tree. There was no reference to how big this garden is, but there were 73,000 species of trees. So it could be a pretty massive garden. I kind of thought it would be fairly large, not, but not a giant forest big, but who knows? Is Eden, I suppose. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me and I ate. Not holding back from Eve here. Chuck the snake under the bus. Didn't even seem to think about this. No real reason why the serpent wanted Adam or Eve to die or how he would even know. Yep, I suppose that's why he called it a snake here. Yeah? Line 13, 14. Sorry, line 14 from chapter 3. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, curse you are among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Here it is a sign of the violent nature of God, a curse and starvation of a serpent. Yes. I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your offspring and hers, he will strike your head and you will strike his hill. So when I read this line then, so the word enmity, it means a state of feeling or active opposition or hostility. So it is, so it is saying that their own children will be hostile to Eve as should Adam kick her in the head. I am reading and understanding this correctly. Wife battery from off of the Bible where only the chapter three of the first book. But that's a good thing, isn't it? You know, beat your wife up, treat her with no respect. Anyway, to the woman he said, I will gre greatly increase the pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. If you, for God wasn't horrible, ladies, try this one. The word pangs means a sudden sharp pain or powerful emotion. He had made childbirth painful. He hates you. And to the man, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of of it all the days of your life. Ah, the woman, you need to be quiet. Do as you're commanded, not listen to them talking serpents and pick the correct food. Not forbidden fruit off of, um, for fuck's sake, love. Man, how has, man now has to grow his own food. How fucking rude. All of this because you were told by the snake to take the wrong food, you stupid woman. Oh, the irony. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. Thorns and thistles get some banging fruit from these kind of bushes. I give you the blackberry. Not sure they grow in the least, but they are pretty tasty. Problem is, they only come out once a year. There you go. By the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it, you were taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. I'm guessing this is the bill. I'm guessing this bit is kind of right. So the Big Bang happened 13.5, 13 13.8 billion years ago. The universe cooled enough that gravity pulled the hydrogen from the universe into stars, giant blue, blue stars, basically almost all hydrogen, massive, fast burning, once burnt out, 
it would go supernova sending vast materials across it. We currently live on a third generation star which had formed of dust and gases that were all the planets and the moons. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. Until this moment it was still just Adam and Eve but there seemed to that they may have had their children now. Who knows? Doesn't say. This is the Bible. It's pretty basic when it comes to facts. Um, where are we? And the Lord God made garments of skin for the man and for his wife and clothed them. So when in Eden, did these two not have skin? Well, guess that's a good reason to uh, leave. Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and how he might reach out his hands and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So now he can eat from the trees again. How has he learned? Sorry, how has he learned? Was it good and evil? This message was lost on me, or was it because he learned that a woman is easily tricked by a talking serpent? This is an awful way to to say women are evil, I think. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to, until the ground from which he was taken. They're no longer in Eden now that now on earth. He drove out the man and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed a cherub, cherubim and a sword flaming and turned the guard the way sorry to guard the way to the tree. Sorry. He drove out the man and to the east of the Garden of Eden he placed a cherubim whatever that is and a sword flaming flaming and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. Cherubim is a winged uh, angelic being described in biblical trans traditions as attending on God. It represents an ancient Middle Eastern art as a lion or boar with eagle wings and a human face and regarded in traditional Christian um, angelology as an angel of the second highest order of the ninefold celestial hierarchy with the tree is guarded by a flaming sword ah brilliant so there you are adam and eve have been kicked out of the garden of eden because of eve allowing a talking servant to influence them the garden is now guarded by a flaming sword because why not and god made adam kick eve in the head man shouldn't listen to a woman because she listens to lies but for this child birth shall be painful that's your teacher don't forget to like, share and subscribe people. This has been your manager at NEP. That was chapter three of the Genesis from a certain point of view. Um, yeah, see you pals. Out of here.